Okay, I don't know how this is going to ha like happen. We should probably explain what the idea is. Mm -hmm. Not that you know what the idea is, but basically, um, I don't know if anyone remembers that video Harry made. When was it? Like ages ago. Probably um, like two years ago, wasn't it? Let's find out. Um, published 17th of July, 2018. Oh, okay. There we go. It's only like so this was like two days ago <laughs> but yeah that video uh harry made a video about the history of roller coasters yeah entitled a brief history of roller coasters and it was quite brief from... of course it was brief it, it didn't it got to modern day looping coasters so the likes of revolution at magic mountain the, the first modern day roller coaster to feature a vertical loop and then it stopped yeah so it was everything from the start to that point, because after that point, it's its own video. You need like its own video yeah. for a brief history of modern day roller coasters because so much has happened. But 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 for the pod, we're we're going even further. We're going even deeper. Exactly. We're gonna dig straight down, guys. Yeah. Straight down. You shouldn't do that, but we're gonna we'll dig. Come out the other side. Um, Hopefully, there's no lava. So what we're doing is we're doing a pod about how roller coasters happened essentially and we're going to do it in a lot of detail. I do want to say this took me hours to research and I haven't even like there's so much other stuff that I didn't get into because there's just like so much happened and it's ridiculous. Um, so we're going in depth but we're not there's n I'm not covering everything, so like if there's something that you're like, mm, you didn't say about that, and then that's because I didn't find it, or I didn't have time to to weave it into this whole thing. But um, this episode is I was gonna call it the dawn of the coasters. Jesus, <laughs> just a quick like as Zoe said before. She's done the research. I was strictly told not to look into anything. Harry's not allowed to do this because w otherwise, what am I going to bring to the table? <laughs> no. So I just know about, you know, the, the video that I made. Well, all, all the knowledge I've got is the knowledge of the video that I made seven months Which ago. Which you've probably forgotten now anyway because you don't retain yeah, information. A, a, a decent chunk of it will be forgotten, yeah. So. What I've done is, though, because obviously, big shout out to Andrew, because he does all the research for the channel. Um, I used his as a base, but I've added a lot more detail to it. So it's kind of follows what Andrew set out to do. But then I've gone further because mm -hmm. obviously the the brief history video was meant to be brief. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Dawn of the Coasters, mate. What do you think? Sounds like... Talking about dinosaurs. I know, it's quite it's quite funny. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay. The anyway. listeners will love it. Um Right. Sure. And this episode is gonna be up until the nineteen twenties. Well it'll be up until wherever we get to, won't it? Well, yeah, because it is quite long, so we'll see what happens. But um but yeah, aiming for the nineteen twenties, which was obviously quite a breakthrough point. But um but well, then. but yeah, so shall I just get into it? I don't know. Let's start at the beginning. We've never done this before. Um, there was a man. There was a man. He no, got there a was... sled and he went down a snow hill and was like, wow, this is fun. Yeah. Is Essen right? Essentially. <laughs> and then in the 17th century, um, this was all happening. Well, it's probably happening forever. But in the 17th mm. century, they had the great idea of like, oh, Let's actually build a slide instead of just going down the mountains. Mm -hmm. Build a slide with snow on it. Well, with and without in the winter. snow. Yeah, and then and then in the summer, they'd just put wheels on things, wouldn't they? Yeah. So so they're called the Russian mountains because obviously we're in Russia. Um, the slopes are typically constructed in town squares and public space spaces, um, twenty to twenty five meters tall. Which, it's pretty high, honestly, for yeah. for back then. But I guess that's about well, right. Well, no, if you think about it, they twenty to twenty five meters. Yeah, like they didn't really have big buildings like we do now. 
because they didn't have any equipment to build tall things with. This is true, but it's not that big on the grand scheme of things. But it's a I great mean, well, slide. To be fair, like 20 meters is taller than Oblivion. Oh, really? For context, yeah. Okay, that's decent. I'll allow that. Um, so you could you could pick up some decent speed. Thing is, though, stretched for hundreds of feet, which I don't know what that is in meters. Mm. But that means the slope isn't very quick, is it? No, no, the gradient wouldn't be. Very yeah. Steep. Anyway, they they all loved it. So they had like a little staircase going up to the top, and it says uh, they mounted a sled made of either wood or an ice block with a straw mat on the top. Can you nice. imagine? Sure. Um, in the winter, the tracks were packed with snow and sprayed with water to create a thick sheet of ice. And occasionally bumps were added to the end of the slide to introduce a little bit more excitement. Whoa. Airtime. Yeah. Air. So so what they're doing is they're just making it into an ice rink. Mm-hmm, basically. Um, just a slope. Yeah, that's all it is. Um, and they slid down it. At the very end, riders ploughed into a pile of sand which slowed them down. Sliders, uh, sliders. Slides were built in parallel pairs but facing opposite directions. So... You slide down one, and then you go up the second one because it's right there where you just got off. Yeah. Which is quite smart when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. I think you mentioned this the other day. Russian mountains remains the term for roller coasters in many languages, such as Spanish, Italian, and French. Ironically, the Russian term for roller coaster, which I'm not even going to attempt to say, translates literally as American mountains. See, look at you Americans taking credit for everything. <laughs> Disgusting. Can't believe it. You know. That's so weird, though. They just swapped. Yeah, it's because you, you got to think about it. That when we got into the proper phase of roller coasters, it was, I can't imagine there was much going on in Russia. Hmm. America were. Oh, yeah, American led it. But, but they well, basically say invented led it. it. They, but they started it. So why wouldn't nah. they just call it? Nah, I, I would say that the French invented the modern day roller coaster. Okay, yeah. Right. But still, you know, why didn't they call Which, it the French mountains? Yeah, but okay, so Russia mountains, big ice slides. Yeah. You know, fun, fun for all the family. Hardcore slides. Um, then what? So then, well, there's a little bit more about the slides because they're very popular with the wealthier classes in Russia. And so they'd have these like slides that all the upper class would be sliding down and they would like decorate them with like flags and trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. So a bit of theming going on, pal. How do you yeah. feel about that? Early day theming. Yeah. Quite like that. Cheeky. Because obviously they just can't just have a normal slide because they're the upper class. They're also a favourite of Catherine the Great, Empress of Russia from 1762 to 1796. And she built one, didn't she? She had a load in her back yeah, garden. This you can still go to Russia today, and there's like, yeah, she had a slide. Uh, it basically had like a building, and then pretty much just hills, like a big hill, and then smaller hills going down. Yeah. And the original building that was at the start of the slide is still there today. No way. Yeah. Yeah, it said she had like loads in her in her on her property in the, at the palace. Yeah. And she had like little carts made with wheels on them. Yeah. Um because she's special and then she'd have like a pavilion next to it so she could drink her tea. Mm -hmm. So she had a great time with the slides. Um yeah. and obviously they're very popular so then they in, they were introduced to France. And there's a lot of contradictory like uh, opinions on how they how the idea got to France but it was probably all of them in in, in the end. Um, some say that during the N Napoleonic Wars, the soldiers were in Russia from France and then they loved them so much they brought them back after the war. Um, others say that when the Russian soldiers occupied France, they introduced the slice to France. So like the Russian soldiers brought it over. Um, but it wasn't as great in France because it wasn't cold enough to have like the frozen ice on the top. So you just get like a mushy, wet, like slop of water mm. and ice so it kind of ruined it a little bit and so then they started to put wheels on their sleds as well just like Catherine the Great did um yeah. so they didn't have to like have any ice going on yep um but that led to a lot of accidents because obviously they're just 
slipping all over the place. Um, yep. And because of that, they decided, let's do a track. Um, yes, a, a, a discrete track. So what, individual lanes, essentially. Yeah. So they'd stop falling off. Um, yeah. So they were bound to a specific, you know, straight, uh, initially straight piece of track. Yeah. And the first then, one, no, the first one with that yeah. was that I can't say these words, was in Belleville. Well, they just called it the Russian mountain. I'm not going to say it in French. Le Montagne Russe. Yeah, effectively, that's the first roller coaster ever because it had a track and it, and it was gravity that was yeah. doing it. Depends how you define it. Exactly. Of, yeah. It's very controversial. Um, but so it was built in the estate of a former aristocrat whose brothers inherited his land when he died. So this dude called Mr. Oh, why are these words French? Bujon? <laughs> I don't Why know. Why are all these I don't words know. French? Well, come on, guys. You're in France. <laughs> Mr. Bujon uh-huh. or something. So people used to say this about his estate. Mr. Bujon's house, which he calls his hermitage, is a building situated in the middle of an English garden, which he has planted in a vast plot next to the... Uh, something gate at the Sean. <laughs> Oh my god, why am I doing this French bit? You know the Chandelier? Uh huh. Is that how you say it? Something like that. Anyway, it's, it's basically he had this whole estate in the middle of Paris that we know today. Yep. But back in those days, there was hardly any Paris. So he just kind of chilled. Yeah, of course. In the middle of Paris. Um, but, it was all, but it was all countryside. So in 1801, they were like, oh, let's. Let's do up the garden and that. So they had stuff like a windmill and things going on. And then in 1817, they built two coasters. Um, The first one, which I mentioned earlier, the Russian mountains. And then the second one was the aerial walk or the aerial stroll. There's two different names for it. Um, And that one was one that was a heart shape. So it had two... first full circuit one. Yeah, and it had two tracks. So like it looked like a heart from above. Yeah. Um, and the launch tower was at the bottom of the, the pointy bit of the heart. Yep. Um, and the, and so you could go up the, the tower and then go down the tracks. Um, but yeah, the, and they, this, this had proper tracks on it, like the, the Russian mountains one. So they'd have their little three wheeled carts. Why, why were they three wheeled? Um, why? You're asking me. Well, I'm just saying like, why weren't they four wheeled? Don't know. Maybe they, uh. Maybe the, they had a wheel that stuck in a groove to try and keep, keep it more in the middle. Mm. Who knows? Anyway, so people would like climb up with their little car and then go down. Yep. And because they had these tracks that were secure, well, the carts were secured to the tracks, so they were allowed to go. Well, they weren't allowed to go, but they could go at higher speeds. Yeah. So yeah. that made it more exciting. And apparently King Louis the something of France... <laughs> I can't do Roman numerals either. Oh my god! It's like X V and then the three eyes. The eighteenth. Whoa. Okay, King Louis the eighteenth of France. Yeah. Uh, he went to the park, but they don't know if he actually went on the ride. And then after this, everybody just went mental about the rides. And there was loads more. There were seven similar ones just in Paris alone. And these were called the French Mountains, the Mountains of Belleville, the American Mountains, the Miniature Mountains, the Swiss Mountains, and the Egyptian Mountains. So nice, nice range there. They they were sticking to the mountain theme. Theme. Mm-hmm. But obviously, back then, mountains was roller coaster. That's what they called it, essentially, isn't it? Well, yeah. So it'd be like us naming one the French roller coaster, the Swiss roller coaster. Yeah. So up to this point, it's only like rich people riding these. Um, but in 1845, they opened, how do you say, Tivoli? Oh, in Copenhagen. Tivoli Gardens. Tivoli. Tivoli. Tivoli Gardens. Yeah, yeah. So that And so that was for like the middle class. Mm-hmm. So now... 
we're starting to see they're trying to bring it down so that more people can do it. Um, yeah, yeah. And then around this time, also in Paris, the first permanent loop track was built, mm -hmm. um, but they stole an English design, of course. What, like the centrifugal railway? Yeah, so they were similar in their basic design to many modern day shuttle roller coasters, yeah. which I don't know what that so means. So they kill you. Yeah, because what they did is they just made the circle literally a circle. Yeah. Mm. So you'd have to be traveling so quick at the start to get you around the top. But obviously you slow down as you go through the loop so that you're going to have so much more force at the bottom than you do at the top. And then everybody just gets whiplash and nearly dies. Yeah. Some of them are apparently allegedly were over like 10 Gs spike wise. Wow. So you'd enter the loop, hit like 10 Gs for a brief period of time yeah which is why people got whiplash and no one wanted to go on them yeah but to I'm be fair though. if you didn't if loop coasters didn't exist and you tried to build one you wouldn't be like oh let's make it an oval straight away you'd think to start with a circular loop oh yeah you would but so then, i can see what but, they were trying to do but then after everyone was like oh this is too too dodgy surely you would have thought that someone would have been like well you know if you make it slightly less circular, you well, might not they kill were, people. but that was years later. Yeah. So, but anyway, they tried. They tried. They did try. So it didn't have a launch, and they just oh. kind of rolled it down. Yeah, very tight loops. Yeah. You know, it, it was the failure of the early day looping coasters that delayed looping coasters for so long. Yeah. Like you got to see, you got to think that we didn't see a modern day looping coaster until the seventies. Thing is, though, they must have just thought that it wasn't going to be possible. Well, yeah, obviously they did. So, and they had so many other things that they could develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in the meantime, so I don't think it was that much of a disaster. Yeah, so so they built this loop one, which was a permanent coaster of a type, mm -hmm. um, and also a bit later in 1887, this dude called Joseph Oller. Don't know if, if that's how you say his name. Um, he owned the Moulin Rouge Music Hall. Um, okay. He rocked up to Paris and built the Russian Mountains of Belleville ride. And that was another permanent one. And it was like 200 meters long and it was a double eight figure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, right. Which I don't really get. What do you mean? Like what's a double eight figure? Well, think about it. Think of, think of an eight you know? Yeah. So you've got to think that, you know, that there's two points at which the eight crosses over. Yeah. One of them would be above the other. So you'd start off on the top plane and as you cross over the first time, you'd be above and then you'll uh, go around the top and okay. then underneath and it's just two of those. So you go, there's like four layers then. I see. So it would slowly go down and we saw those in the early um, 1900s as well. Yeah. Okay, I see. And then it says... As Later enlarged to four figure eight shaped loops. Anyway, so that, that was 1887. And so by this point, we've gone from slides to like permanent um, actual rides. Yeah. And that's how France kind of developed it all. There was obviously other ones that they did, but that's the main gist of it. And then across the pond... Back in the day, so now we're going back in time to earlier. In 1828, so that's about 10 years after the Russian mountains was built in France, the, how do you say this? M-A-U-C-H. Uh, Muck. <laughs> is that what Muck it is? Chunk Railway. Yeah, Muck Chunk Railway. Yeah. So that was built. So this is the thing of, um, so in America, they used to use railroads to transport coal up and down the mountains. So... This one's in Pennsylvania, so basically it's a little cart thing and they use it to get the coal to different places. But they had a load of different tracks and they used to power it by mules, which is mm -hmm. hilarious. And then in 1846, they changed to steam power. So this was like a funicular system to move them uphill, but then they just use gravity to move them back down anyway. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, the, and this was like proper new at the time. So everyone's going a bit crazy about this because they've never seen anything like it before. It's just a railway. Yeah, but but imagine. 
at the time. It was it's like revolutionary. Flag. And so people are like rocking up to watch this railway just go. And then people started thinking, why don't we just ride it <laughs> with the coal? And uh, yeah. so word spread and it became one of like the biggest tourist attractions. Um, so that so what they do is they'd have the the coal was transported in the afternoon, no, in the morning. Right. And then once they'd done all the coal in the afternoon, the tourists would get to ride it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so before the steam power, this this whole round trip because it's a round trip, um, it would take four and a half hours. But when they moved to steam, it only take took eighty minutes. Well, yeah, I imagine it's the mules dragging imagine the cart up that. that took so long. Yeah, and that's why people went so crazy about it. Yeah. It was just, like, insane. Um, so, yeah, so they piled all these people on in the afternoon. But um, And this was a lengthy track, was it not? Yeah, I don't know how long, but it was, like, a good way. Because that's why, that's why they built it in the first place, because obviously they couldn't carry the coal themselves yeah. that far. But, yeah, so everyone's just going mental for this this railway and in 1872 they stopped doing coal runs because this other one called the panther creek railroad opened and it was more efficient basically Mm -hmm. so now the mark one is just a passenger ride yeah and they carried over thirty-five thousand riders a year (laughs) that's pretty crazy i know so at this point, it's one of the most popular tourist attractions in the whole of America. And everybody's loving it because obviously the views are great as well. So you get to like ride this crazy thing and then look at the views. Um, so everybody's like piling in. Um, the 18th president, Ulysses Grant or something. Is that how you say it? I don't know. You're not very good at pronouncing no. these names, are you? I even like spelled it out for myself. Uli... No, Ulysses... He's, I don't know, um, the 18th president of the USA and Thomas Edison went to ride it. Um, so it's pretty, pretty famous. Everyone's loving it. And then in 1929, they sold the railway uh, to the Mark Chunk Switchback Railway Company um, because of the Great Depression. They couldn't open it, yeah. uh, couldn't keep it open for a couple more years after. And then... They closed it and sold it for scrap metal, and it was it cost eighteen thousand dollars, which is three hundred and thirty thousand dollars today. Um, so they just sold it for that much, um, and that's like two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. So that's quite a lot. But but oh, anyway, really? well, it, for scrap metal, it is. Yeah, yeah, but I imagine you've got because it's so a long, crap, isn't it? Ton of scrap metal, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so that's quite sad because they just had to close it down after all of that fame but anyway so so that's happening everybody's loving it so so another thing about this is it was an inspiration obviously for future roller coasters but it also contributed to roller coaster safety because um the upward section of the railways are crypt with an early anti-rollback device on the bottom of the car so and this evolved later on into a crucial safety feature on all roller coasters yes this was like the safety dog system, which I'm sure you fully understand. Um, yeah. And that's like when you go up a lift hill and it's like making a clink clink sound. That's what that is. It's, it's the teeth. Yeah. The you, you the little piece of metal that's underneath the train can go over the teeth one way, but right. then it, they can't go over the teeth the other way. So yeah. they can only, they can go up, but they can't go down. I see. Because of the shape of it's like a sawtooth. Yeah. So it can it can go up the angled bit, but the the other face is flat. Yeah. And it obviously can't go back up that. So they so, had that going on, which was quite yeah. cool. Well, it take a lot of the stress off the donkeys when they're dying. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So and t- and today, if you want to, if you live in the area, you can go hike the route that it once covered. Um, but um. But yeah, so that 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 was quite a good first step for the Americans, and somebody who happened to ride this this railway was a mechanically gifted inventor called Lamarcus A. Thompson, mm-hmm. and so he in his life he'd pursued a number of different business ventures, um, but then when he rode the Mack Chunk Mack Chunk Railway, oh God, yeah, 
MCR I've written, um, he was inspired to turn his attention to roller coasters. Um, so this dude rocked up, rode it, and he was like, cool, I'm going to build a coaster. Um, so he's the one that famously constructed the Switchback Railway at Coney Island in 1884. And that was three years before the first permanent roller coaster was built in Europe. So, But he, he stole his design. <laughs> Much of the design mm. work had already been completed in 1878 by another inventor, Richard Knud- Knudsen something. <laughs> Right. Um, he take he so he this guy Knudsen or something, he took out a patent for his version of the gravity roller coaster, called yeah. the inclined plane railway, but he yeah, never yeah. actually built it. So Thompson came in, saw the designs, thought that's cool, and just went, I'm gonna build it for real. And so this thing that he designed was like, basically the same as the early slides, but instead of being a slide, it was like a tracked thing with little carts on it so but and it also had bumps so it's like you just go down a bumpy track one way and then other people are going down a bumpy track the other way if that makes sense yep so that's happening and then this thing that Knudsen had invented turned into the switchback railway which debuted at Coney Island on June 13th 1884 is this thing of two parallel descending wooden tracks, each descending in the opposite direction. It's a basic ride. Yeah. But everybody went mental for it. The ride became tremendously popular, bringing in an average of $600 a day at a nickel a ride. And that's mental. about $15,000 or £11,000 in today's money. A day? Yeah. So £11,000 a day it's making. And so within three weeks of it being opened, it had already paid for itself. (laughs) And although it was successful, um, the initial car design was actually quite hilarious. Did you know about this? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what it was, but it it was weird. So they didn't They sat sideways. Yeah. Yeah. They sat as if they were on like a tube on a bench. I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how weird is that? And um, so they'd face the other track yeah. or outwards. So yeah, but then these were soon changed to the more practical forward-facing cars, and that also like um, boosted his profits because he could fit more people on each car. Yeah. But yeah, it only had a top speed of six miles an hour, and it lasted a minute. A minute. Yeah, but at the time, Honestly, it slow. was insane because people had never. Yeah, experienced anything like that before. It's argued by many that the Switchback Railway ushered in the first wave of coastal wars in the United States and consequently all of today's modern thrill rides. So yeah, so a lot of people think that this is the one. This is the first roller coaster. After he built the Switchback Railway at Coney Island, they started to build other rides. Um, and it became home to three competing theme parks and popularized the roller coaster culture in America. So Coney Island is where it's at. Mm-hmm. 1885, one year after the Switchback Railway was built, the Serpentine Railway opened, um, designed by Charles Al- Alcoke. Alcoke? I don't know. It, it was a scenic railway gravity coaster, which was the first to tie the track end to the start and return passengers to the starting position without the need to disembark. Mm-hmm. Full circuit. The trains travel very slowly with passengers sat sideways as they did in the first version of the Switchback Railway, which makes no sense because why would you build the second one? Well, it's because someone else copied the guy and the first guy, and obviously the first guy hadn't changed it yeah, that's by the true. point where they started to develop it. So, Well, I just can't it, believe they thought that was a good idea in the first place. Well, I guess because... <laughs> You could just have, there'd be less materials involved in having one bench as opposed to several benches. I guess. But why would you want to look at other people instead of looking where you're going? Don't know. Anyway, crazy times. Although the Serpentine Railway attracted many customers, it was another inventor, Philip Hinkle, uh, his technological advancement in 1885, which gave the industry a boost. So... Is this the lift door? Yeah. So... Instead of like pushing the car up to the top, this dude comes in, yeah, and he's like, "Let's get this powered hoist to pull them up." So essentially, the lift hill was born, and he designed 
an oval coaster, oval shaped coaster for Coney Island. And so this yeah. was like taller and faster than the other two because of the lift hill. Yeah. Um, so Thompson got a little bit sad about this because it was obviously better than his one. So he decided to start his own company and they constructed 50 more of the switchback railways across America and Europe and everywhere. So yeah, so his company just kind of exploded across the world and all these switchback railways started being built. So so yeah, so he so Thompson's gone away because he's upset and he's and he's making all these coasters. Um, but back at Coney Island, the so this is where the loop tracks started coming back into fashion. So they were attempted in the, in Paris in the 1800s, but they tried again in America. A woman called Linda Beecher, mm. she designed and installed the Flip Flap Railway, which is a great name. So this was at Coney Island in Sea Lion Park in 1895, and it featured a 25-foot circular loop. We all know how that's going to turn out. Deadly. Yeah, and it was uncomfortable and dangerous, but it was popular in the few years that it was actually open. Well, yeah, I can imagine people wanted to ride it once and then after they rode it, realised that it's a complete mess. Yeah, basically. There's still rides today like that, but we'll just... This is true. So six years later after this one, in 1901, Edward Prescott built the Loop the Loop at Coney Island. So this is another loop coaster. They tried again. This one was different. It had an oval-shaped design, which was more comfortable to ride than the previous ones, but it was still not completely successful. But it was the top ride for coaster enthusiasts for the next six years until the installation of Drop the Dip in 1907. Coney Island is, like, insane because they have, like, all these coasters and they're just trying out new things basically yeah with every one so now we've got a more successful loop coaster we've got like the switchback railways the serpentine full circuit coasters ones with lift hills ones that go upside down exactly and now drop the dip in 1707 1907 uh, which was designed by a carpenter called christopher fucht and his dentist Welcome nice. Mosley, which is the best name I've ever heard in my life. So this guy called Fucht, he saw a little toy model of roller coaster in Mosley's office and he was like, pal, do you want to build a full scale of this with me? And Mosley's like, sure. Um, so, he, so, they, so they just did it. Um, so it's considered by some to be the first truly high speed roller coaster featuring extreme elements like huge drops, and it was the first to have lap bars. Oh, so really? now the safety of all these rides is starting to improve as well. It opened on June the 6th, 1907, but after a month it was destroyed in the Steeplechase Park fire. So Fuchs was like, cool, let's just rebuild it. But he didn't just rebuild it, he just did it in a more extreme form. <laughs> So yeah, he just kept improving it and improving it. And he also worked as a ride operator on it. This guy was keen, all right? So yeah, it was very popular and it earned around $20,000 a year, which is $500,000 in today's money, which is £380,000. It's a lot, basically. (laughs) Yeah. Um, did well. So this guy's pretty cool because he comes in with the lap bars comes in with the crazy elements he's improving the ride all the time it got burnt down and he was like nah let's just rebuild it but better so i like this dude and then also so now now they've got this crazy ride with lap bars as well as all the other stuff and then they also have the first virginia real coaster designed by henry riel real i don't know well if it's virginia real you think no but it's it spelled be- differently mate it's R I E H L, which R-I-E-H-L. is real, but not real. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, he named it after his daughter, who's called Luna Virginia Real. Well, then. <laughs> yeah, but it's a different spelling. It's probably not pronounced real, but anyway. So they built this in 1908, so that's a year after the drop the dip. So every year they're coming out with a new thing. So this one was like um, little tubs which zigzagged down, so they the tubs span. Yeah, yeah. Very They're exciting. Just basically following the edge, 
but spinning as they yeah. went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's quite cute. There was one at Blackpool. Yeah, yeah, day. yeah. There is, but it was later than this. This was the Mighty first obviously. one. Obviously. So Coney Island's just smashing out of the park, but over in Ohio at Uslid. Is mm. that how you say it? I don't know. You slid Beach Park in Cleveland in 1913. The first, first coaster with a Mobius-style track was built, and it was called Derby Racer, designed by John Miller, who's quite a famous dude. John Miller, yeah. Yes. Um, so this one, it featured one track which formed a Mobius loop where both coaster trains would begin on one side of the station and return to the other side. So that's like, uh, is it Grand National? Grand National, yeah. yeah. In Blackpool. So that's a new style that they tried. And John Miller was actually most famous for designing a device that prevented cars from rolling backwards down the lift hill in the event of a pull chain breakage. And also the under friction wheel. Upstop wheel. Yeah. So in 1919, he patented the Miller under friction wheel, a.k.a. the upstop wheel, which was a wheel that ran under the track to keep the coaster cars from flying off, which helps. And it was this that allowed designers to use very steep drops, sharp turns, and high speeds. Yeah. So, so this before dude this, is good. <laughs> yeah, well, well, before this, you got to think that you could only build a coaster as steep or with the gradient changing as fast as gravity would change. Yeah. So you could have... Every coaster had to have essentially flow to air time or below, realistically below. So mm-hmm. no coaster had like proper thrilling airtime before this because if it did the train would leave the track and obviously they didn't want that because it would just slam back down yeah so all of them were designed to be less intense but then as soon as the upstop wheels came in he started making they went mental yeah to the point where people could get thrown Mm -hmm. you know out of the train yeah so that dude did some good things and so all of this is in america but during this time in Europe and Australia, they're also building new roller coasters. So Blackpool Pleasure Beach in the UK, whoop, whoop, they built their own switchback railway in 1891, which was later replaced by the Big Dipper. Mm-hmm. They also added a scenic railway in 1907. Um, so they're basically copying the American ones at this point. And then 1909, the Velvet Coaster was built, which had an oval circuit and a few tame drops. Um, but they made it bigger in the 1920s. And did you know there's now a Weatherspoons pub named after the Velvet Coaster? I did know that. <laughs> so that's nice, isn't it? Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's what Blackpool's doing. Over in Australia, they built a scenic railway at Lunda Park in Melbourne. Still there, is it not? Or yes. At least one is. Today, it's the world's oldest continually operating roller coaster, and it still features a system where the brake man rides the car with wheels. Wait, it's the world's oldest continuously operating. Yep. Not the world. It's not the world's oldest. No, because yeah. over in how is it Tivoli, Tivoli, Tivoli Gardens? Oh, yeah, God. they've got they've got a scenic railway. That's yeah. So this they built this one in 1914, and it's called Wait for it, the roller coaster, mm. which is still operating to this day. Yeah. So that and that's very old because obviously it's like a hundred and something. Oh, yeah. But none of the original parts are still there. <laughs> no, but it's all it's just going to be new. So yeah, so so lots happening in America, but also it's happening all over the world as well, just not on the same kind of scale. And basically, like Coney Island is just the hub of like everything that was happening. Yeah. But yeah, so of course over this period, many more coasters were built as the popularity of these rides grew. Uh, the last few rides brought increased levels of danger for the riders, but also a massive improvement in safety, especially the lap bars, because obviously yeah. pretty crazy to ride without a lap bar. These kinds of improvements would continue to happen over the next decades of roller coaster development, meaning coasters will get safer and more thrilling. Roller coasters had come a long way from the tame and basic Russian mountains of the 17th century, but they still had a long way to go before they started to look like the kinds of coasters we're used to now. The following years, starting in the economic high times of the Roaring Twenties, brought about the golden age of coasters, which saw more than 300 coasters built in the decade. And this is what we're going to cover in the next episode. It's pretty crazy that they built so many. Well, they didn't build so many, but they, they like, got through a load of different designs in quite a short amount of time. You've got to think, it would have been such a dense place of rides that everyone wanted to try and 
make something unique and different so people would ride it. Yeah. So they had to innovate and they had to change things, you know, just like people innovate today to try and, you know, get seen or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. So having a hub of so many different people trying to do the same thing obviously progressed it very quickly. And it's all like businessmen trying to make it in America. Well, yeah, obviously. By inventing all these cool things and just like building these new rides. But you can see where they came from because I guess slides are essentially what they are, aren't they? <laughs> really? Well, very... Just extreme <laughs> yeah, sliding. Built up slides. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> yep. Thoughts? It's just basically my video, but with more of the, the crappy facts that I don't really care about. Oh, that's rude. It's literally so interesting to me. I don't know why. Yeah, but like... I think it's because I can imagine like being really shocked by it back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did a Twitter poll to see which coaster, quotation marks, um, you think was basically the first one. Did you see the result or not? No, I haven't. Se- well, I can't even remember what the options were. So the Russian mountains, mm-hmm. the Mac- Muck Chunk Railway... Mo- Yep. The Switchback Railway or none yep. of them? I would have said the French ones. Which one's that? Wait, was... I can't remember. Did you say that the Switchback Railway was before the French carts? But then... Switchback Railway was after. Yeah, no, I would have said the, the French... The so Russian Mountains. Them. Oh, right. If that's what you mean by the French ones, then yeah. Well, well, the Russian Mountains are like the slides. But then I wouldn't say... Oh, so you coaster. mean... Um... Les Montagnes Russes. Yeah. The ones that were discrete tracks with carts on. Okay. I would say that. So people voted 46% for the Russian mountains. Yeah. So that was the winner. And coming in second was the Switchback Railway at 36%. Yeah. Uh, 3% for the Mac Railway and 15% for none of them. So somebody said, I don't know what their name is, Ace of Spade. 159 said uh the same as you the one in paris with the tracks yeah. somebody also says uh someone called andrew said i think lay whatever you just said meets the requirements of royal coaster because it's a vertical sorry it's a vehicle running along a guidance track affected yep. by gravity which makes sense yeah exactly that's why i would have said the same thing yeah and then someone called jack said the roller coaster didn't truly become what it is today until the introduction of upstop wheels. But earlier coasters are still creds. I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue that really, because there are loads of roller coasters that the upstop wheels don't specifically make it a roller coaster. Yeah. By any means, does it? It just means that you could do more. Yeah. And not... I see what they mean though. Like they actually did stuff that looks like a roller coaster, like the inversions. Once the upstart wheels had come in. Oh, but they were doing inversions before upstart wheels. Yeah, boring ones though. <laughs> well, yeah, just loops. But you could you can get away with inversions nowadays without having upstart wheels. Yeah. You just got to design well. No, I don't think the upstart wheels were... I mean, obviously they, they made coasters what they are, but... They don't make a coaster. No. I don't know. I don't know which one I think. Depends which like um, specification you go by. Mm-hmm. I feel like the Switchback Railway, probably. Because that was like the first kind of amusement park setting as well, instead of just yeah, but, chilling But then in the Paris. French ones was just the same, but earlier. Yeah, but it was, just pa- it was just Paris, wasn't it? It wasn't like... Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter where yeah, it was. Yeah, but like Coney Island was a proper amusement park. It, so? Instead of it just being in Paris. I don't know. It just strikes me as more of a coaster. Nah. Got the French did it first, man. Can't let the Americans get that one. Mm. The Americans did quite a lot, though. That's what you get when you have a hub of people doing the same thing. Mm. And the American dream, man. Yeah, um, that old thing. So, yeah, that's it, I guess. The first history pod. And next time we'll be doing... I don't know how much we'll get done next time. We're going to start in the 20s, so we'll see how long that takes to talk like how much stuff there is to talk about probably loads so Mm -hmm. let us know what you thought of this you know how we can improve it what you'd potentially like us to cover maybe after 
we talk about or go through the uh, entirety of the history of roller coasters <laughs> from start to finish. Yeah. You know, there, there's got to be loads of different topics that we can discuss. Well, I'm definitely thinking like Coney Island on its own could be its own thing because yeah. there was so much stuff I left out of just Coney yeah. Island. Um, and I don't really fully understand it, but... It's very true. But yeah, just give us a shout. If if it's rubbish, tell us and we'll never do it again <laughs> and you'll never know how they fully developed. Wow, what a what a tease. I know. Also, follow us on Twitter. Do all the stuff. You can email us. You can send us a voice message on the website. and Customer.com forward slash podcast. Yep. Twitter at CBR podcast. And iTunes reviews. So five star review is going to say roly coasters are cool <laughs> you always do something about cool <laughs> it's always like so and so is cool or like whatever there you go that's all you need yeah just anything is like cool just say it's cool give yeah. us a five star the mark trunk railway is cool yeah five stars we'll Thank love you. you forever but um yeah that's been this i guess